What's up everyone, it's Randeep, it's Dan, and we're getting set for another video and getting set for another series. Yes, the one we all predicted, the Montreal Canadiens versus the Winnipeg Jets. Dan, how did we get here? And most importantly, styles make fights. We've seen both of these games, both of these teams play a style of game that is tight checking. What do we see in this series? Is it gonna be more of the same? All I know is uh, I hope I start getting some predictions right at, at some point in these playoffs. Uh, it's been uh, pretty bleak so far uh, with this, but it's an interesting series. Both of these teams kind of got here by playing an ultra defensive style. And, you know, we saw what uh, Winnipeg did to the Edmonton Oilers. I think in that game four where they clinched at the, the, the triple overtime uh, with Kyle Connor, um, you know, it was, they, they blocked more shots than they allowed to get through to Connor Hellebuck. You see it with the Habs, the way that they kind of bared down and won games five, six, and seven. They really locked up the Leafs. And Philippe Deneau had a big part in shutting down Austin Matthews and, and Mitch Marner and the, the trident of Ben Sherratt and, and Shea Weber. And of course, Jeff Petrie. And you could throw Joel Edmondson in there as well, make it the quartet. Uh, they they really just frustrated the Leafs. They really upped their physical game. And they sat back and waited for Toronto to make mistakes. It was the same for Winnipeg against Edmonton. Now I wonder, you know, who's going to be the team that opens up, that really tries to get on the front foot in this series? And I think it's going to be the Winnipeg Jets with their top six forward group. I think so as well. The Winnipeg Jets have that star power. They got Nick Ehlers. We know what they have in their first line on top of that as well. And if you're Dominic Ducharme, you're kind of playing an Islanders light type of game, right? You're waiting for the other team to make mistakes. And that's what Montreal did really well in the final three games of that series. So at first, you know, Dominic Ducharme was being criticized for being too reactive, maybe not being proactive and flexing what his team had. But the strategy played out perfectly fine. And the Winnipeg Jets do have that horsepower. They have that, you know, that talent. They have that power play. So I would expect them to open up more, but what they also have is they have mistakes in their game and there's plenty for the Montreal Canadiens to take advantage of. Remember, this is a team that gives up a fair bit in the playoffs. They changed their personality a little bit against the Edmonton Oilers, but Montreal does have the horses to kind of make them pay. This is a Winnipeg Jets team that during the regular season, we saw they give up a lot of high danger chances. They give up a lot of open looks at goal, but in goal is where I think the most interesting matchup is and hey listen forwards for forwards that's great defensively you've got some difference makers as well but we all know when it comes to goaltending two of the best in the world are going to be going head to head right now and you know normally you'd say Connor Hellebuck wins this based on the last couple of seasons but with the resurgence of Carey Price and especially in these final three games there Dan this is a this is one hell of a matchup between both of these guys I uh Mea, mea culpa, okay, on Carey Price. <laughs> Every year I kind of, you know, make some Carey Price jokes because of his numbers in the regular season, and ah, he's past it, he's not the guy that he used to be, and then the playoffs come around, and there he is, just an absolute brick wall. Though, you know, Montreal, again, did play really well defensively in that game seven, and they made sure to lock down the Leafs' top guys. Now, the one thing about that is can Montreal do that to multiple lines? Because that's what Winnipeg has to offer. Once John Tavares went out for the Leafs and they continued to load up their top line with, with Matthews and Marner, and even they trail in games, they throw Nylander up there. It was one line to worry about. And you know that kind of does simplify it a little bit from a matchup perspective. You can't do that so much against Winnipeg. They're going to have Ehlers and Dubois getting more than a full week off to rest and recuperate. And I think that's huge for Winnipeg. That's going to be tough. And they're going to need Carey Price to continue to be this guy. And also, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm going to run on narrative street a little bit here. Connor Hellebuck's going to have a little extra motivation for getting the Vesna snub as well. Okay, so you're going to... And Connor Hellebuck does use that sort of stuff for his advantage. We've seen that in the past as well. It matters to him. Uh, beyond that, though, you talk about Carey Price. This is a guy that we saw in that Leafs series. Guys were overthinking it. When Carey Price is on his game, they try to pick those corners. Austin Matthews missed the net more than he did pretty much throughout the year. His, uh, you know, on net percentage plummeted, you know, by at least 10% in that series. So when he's on his game, the shooters start overthinking it. So we'll see if that carries on for both teams for that matter whether it's Connor Hellebuck as well. The one question I have with the Montreal Canadiens, 
and we saw it in the first four games of the Toronto series, is can they score? And generally, throughout the year, even the last two years, they've had struggles getting on the board consistently enough. That's one question where, yes, the star power is on Winnipeg's side. The depth, you could argue, you know, Montreal has some pretty good depth. They still gun Caulfield, Jesperi Kotkaniemi, Nick Suzuki, all those guys that I mentioned, it was a great step for them in the last round to have produced and produce points and goals. But the Montreal Canadiens are very reliant on their young players to step up in the right moments. And against the Leafs, they did. Can they do it in another series against a rough and tumble Winnipeg group? That's another question. But you mentioned it, star power versus depth. The way I look at it is, yes, the top six of the Winnipeg Jets is stronger. They've got more star power. But the defense of the Montreal Canadiens is where their deciding factor is. And we saw the defense combined with Philippe Dano was a difference maker in the series against the Leafs. I think that's where the power comes from. And we even saw Ben Schrott hitting, you know, players and Nick Suzuki with stretch passes in that Toronto series to a certain extent. So I know there's going to be a lot of focus on the top six of the Winnipeg Jets, but that, you know, four-man unit on defense that eats minutes and can play at least half of the game, as we saw in many games against the Toronto Maple Leafs, that's the deciding factor for the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, uh, Juice, Kevin BX is going to have to update his lingo. It's the quartet now, as I named it in uh, in this video. I don't know if it's going to but... catch on the same way the Trident did, but okay. <laughs> Pro- probably not. Uh, but Juice, maybe, maybe take notes. Um, I'll say this, you know, when it comes to a prediction of sorts, I, I am looking at Winnipeg in this series. And I think back to the, the beginning of the season, and, and they were – looking like you know maybe the team that could win the north division and they went through some injuries and went through their mid-season lull and even kind of sputtered to the finish line much like montreal did this year but i think with them getting healthy nick ehlers is the most dangerous forward in this series and i know there's a lot of names out there but ehlers when he is going he is absolutely frightening to play against his speed is something that is very difficult to deal with. And I don't know if the Habs have that player. And the other thing is Toronto's power play was trash this year. And it wasn't even, you know, when when they got opportunities in, in game six and seven, it's like Montreal didn't even have to break a sweat to stop the Leafs power play. That is not going to be the case when they go up against the Winnipeg Jets. Those are two big factors that I lean towards the Jets. And I think they win this one in six games. I know there were boys, but doesn't it feel like Nikolai Ehlers, a piano fell off his back after Patrick Lanning got traded? <laughs> Essentially, that's what it feels like. He's a different player. He's playing with much more confidence, especially in the playoffs. I differ with you. I think the Montreal Canadiens get this in six or seven. They are the deeper team in the sense that you look at that defense, it's a game changer. If Carey Price plays this way, which he generally does in the playoffs the last couple of years anyways, they are a problem. The key factor for me with the, the Canadiens will be, though, they need to get contributions from their older players, which we saw with Tyler Toffoli and Corey Perry, who is, you know, dipping into the fountain of youth yet again, but also their young guys. And Kotkaniemi, Nick Suzuki, they've had mixed results in the regular season. Suzuki had a good one, Kotkaniemi not so great, but they keep on stepping up in the playoffs. You're going to need that sort of depth to beat this Winnipeg Jets team. I lean Montreal Canadiens. Dan, Re- uh, Dan uh, Reach- is reaching, I'm going to say, Dan is uh, picking the Winnipeg Jets. Who do you pick? Hit us up in the comments. Like, subscribe. Let us know what you're thinking. Who wins the series, the Montreal Canadiens or the Winnipeg Jets? We'll catch you next time.